You are so not invited to my bat mitzvah. Was written by Fiona Rosenblum in 2005. You can tell. There are so many 2005 pop culture references. The characters listen to Ashley Simpson and Jessica Simpson, but not Homer Simpson. Kelly loves talking about Reese Witherspoon. And of course they watch Britney and Kevin Chaotic. The reality TV show that lasted for five episodes. Argofomp book review, Argofomp book review. Stacy Friedman's bot mitzvah is a month away. She's not looking forward to it because she doesn't know how to sing, her mother buys her ugly clothes, and her ten year old brother Arthur is a fat dork. She prays that God will do something to fix them, but more importantly, she wants God to help her with Andy Goldfarb. He's so tall and good-looking. Why can't he love her the way she loves him? Stacy goes to a Harry Potter-themed bat mitzvah with her two best friends, Kelly and Lydia. They hang out with a group of cool girls and do choreographed dances, hoping to look good in front of the boys. The worst thing ever happens. Andy dances with Julie Haven. And he kisses her, even though she's hairy and disgusting. Stacy is so mad, she officially declares that she is over Andy. The group goes to a nearby swimming hole. Stacy's excited because Andy's coming along. She can't help but ask him about Julie. He says, yeah, Patna, she's a Betty. Which must be the right thing to say, because Stacy wants to kiss him and date him again. Mom takes Stacy dress shopping. The worst thing ever happens. Mom picks out a dress herself. Ew! Stacy cries and screams at Mom, but Mom says there's no time. They have to leave right away to meet Dad. While leaving the mall, the boys laugh at how ugly Stacy's dress is. They call her Bridezilla. Stacy hopes that's a compliment. Uh, no, it's not. Andy says, I'll give you a holla. Stacy thinks that means they are going out on a date this weekend. Again, that's wrong. Too bad Andy doesn't come with a translation dictionary. Mom and Dad separated five months ago. The family is shocked when Dad arrives with a young new girlfriend named Delilah. She's so fake, she clearly had plastic surgery to make herself look younger. And Stacy is clearly the kind of person who will do the exact same thing when she gets older. Stacy worries all weekend long when Andy doesn't call her. Finally, she can't stand it anymore. At bat mitzvah prep, she lies to Rabbi Sherwin, breaks into his office, and calls Andy. Lydia answers the phone. Why is she at Andy's house? Stacy is so upset, she lies to the rabbi again and goes directly to Andy's. The worst thing ever happens. Lydia kisses Andy! How could Lydia kiss her best friend's crush like that? Worst best friend ever! In Lydia's defense, Stacy publicly denounced Andy, and it's not like Stacy and Andy were ever together. I'm pretty sure Andy doesn't even know her name, and I am positive that Stacy would do the exact same thing if the situation was reversed. But still, Lydia is so not invited to the bat mitzvah anymore. Stacy still dreams of marrying Andy, so at school, she asks him why he didn't call her. Andy doesn't seem to recognize her. He clearly doesn't remember talking to her earlier. He says, my bad. Stacy's so excited. He said, my bad. That means he loves her, and he's sorry he kissed the Lydia. Stacy is so delusional. Rabbi Sherwin can tell Stacy has major jealousy problems. He says she needs to learn to be happy for other people, and he asks her to do three mitzvahs. That is, three selfless acts of loving kindness, not done for a reward. Stacy doesn't really understand what the rabbi means because he uses big words. She figures he's saying if she does three nice things, God will give her Andy as a boyfriend. 
because that's how God works. Stacy figures her first mitzvah can be helping her fat brother lose weight. Her second mitzvah will be helping lonely mom find a new boyfriend. That won't be easy. It's not like mom is Edina Menzel. As for her third mitzvah, Stacy doesn't bother to do one. I guess she can't think of a third person she can be nice to. She could try harder to be nice to mom. When mom asks, what's going on with you and Lydia? Stacy says, God, mom, you're so annoying. Lydia writes a note asking Stacy if they can please talk and be friends again. Stacy is happy because if Lydia apologizes and gives Andy to her, she won't have to do the dumb mitzvahs anymore. Lydia and Stacy both go to a group slumber party. Andy and the boys show up. The worst thing ever happens. Andy says these criminal-looking chassis got him bent. So Lydia kisses him right in front of everyone! The other girls push Stacy into fighting with Lydia. The argument that follows is so bad, Stacy uninvites everyone from her bat mitzvah. She goes home early. When Mom asks why, Stacy yells at her for being annoying. Is it wrong that I want Mom to ground Stacy for a month? Arthur proves to be useful for once when he helps Stacy destroy her ugly dress. Mom lets Stacy go dress shopping by herself, and the best thing ever happens. Lydia tries to kiss Andy, and he ignores her! Stacy's happy, but also feels a little sad to see her former best friend be humiliated like that. Mom refuses to go on a blind date. Stacy tries making Arthur a healthy dinner. It is so disgusting, he throws up on his shirt. He takes his shirt off. Stacy hates this. She orders him to put on a new shirt right away because she cannot handle looking at his fat body. So her mitzvahs are going quite badly. Stacy asks an Italian exchange student named Dante to give Arthur exercise lessons. He shows Arthur how to dance. In less than a week, Arthur is in perfect shape. Wow, that is a lot of quick weight loss. What dance was Dante doing? Also, does it still count as Stacy's mitzvah when Dante did all the work of helping Arthur lose weight? Stacy overhears Lydia and Andy arguing. Lydia insists that he's her boyfriend, while he insists, no, their secret agreement is over. Lydia cries as Andy leaves. If it was me, I would be asking many questions about this secret agreement, but Stacy doesn't. She jumps straight to writing a marriage announcement for herself and Andy, because clearly they're getting married now. Mom talks with Dante's guardian. Stacy thinks it's a waste of time until Mom asks him to be her date at the bat mitzvah. Then Stacy takes credit for finding her mom a boyfriend! That's two mitzvahs done! At her bat mitzvah, Stacy sees Andy is using his phone instead of paying attention. She realizes she made a mistake when she picked him over her best friend. Stacy reinvites Lydia to the bat mitzvah and gives a big speech about what she learned. Lydia explains that she never liked Andy. The truth is that she wanted to know what kissing a boy was like, so she made an agreement with Andy to come over to his house and practice kissing. That was the kiss Stacy saw. It was all a terrible misunderstanding. I notice that Lydia makes no attempt to explain the slumber party kiss or the mall kiss. That is twice she purposely kissed Andy in front of a large crowd, even though she must have known that Stacy would take it badly. The girls cheer over how much they hate Andy now, and they take great delight in rejecting him when he asks them to dance and maybe try more practice kissing. Stacy gets a happy ending when Dante asks her to dance. He kisses her in front of everyone. The end. Post-book follow-up. I'm not sure how to feel about this book. The first time I read it, I hated this book. Stacy's so mean and self-centered. If she wasn't the narrator, she would be the villain. 
she is so shallow and selfish that she's completely unaware of the fact that she treats everyone else like garbage. There's also the fact that Andy's a pretty poor love interest. I struggled to understand why Stacy likes him so much. Is it just because he's good looking? That seems to be his only positive quality. I was relieved when Dante took a larger role in the story, because it was fairly obvious that he would be Stacy's boyfriend at the end. The book ignores the fact that Dante is probably Catholic, not Jewish. Since Dante is a foreign exchange student, his English is flawed. Between Dante and Andy, it is clear Stacy has a thing for guys who do not speak proper English. I liked when the book took brief breaks from Stacy's narration for one of her prayers to God, or one of her failed attempts at writing a bat mitzvah speech. Those sections were so good, it makes me wish the entire book had been a series of mitzvah speeches, sort of like a journal book. I half enjoyed Stacy's attempts to help her family members. The family dynamics were interesting, but Stacy would often say or do something so mean to her relatives that I would lose interest. The family stuff was good enough, I wish her father had played more of a role. He only appears briefly when dropping off Arthur. He could have been Stacy's third mitzvah. When I reread the book for this review, I decided to treat it as a comedy. Instead of taking Stacy seriously at face value, I took her more as a humorous exaggeration of a teenage girl, like Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen or Diary of a Wimpy Kid, where the narrator's obliviousness is part of the joke. I like the book way better as a comedy. Although there were still times when Stacy was so mean it took me out of the story. I'm definitely not the target audience, so maybe you shouldn't take my complaints too seriously. Oh, and one last thing, even though I didn't like the book, I found it to be a page turner that goes by quickly, probably because of the short chapters. And the title is really good too. I give You Are So Not Invited to My Bot Mitzvah a 3 out of 10.